Fair enough. All right. Holy cow. I could not wait. Okay. I could not wait. Wait, wait a minute here. Gotta, by the way, guys, please hit the like button here. Sills, I disagree with you. Almost 90% of your takes, but I show up every day. You know what that means to me? A ton. And you know what, too? Means something else. Philly 500 has such a great and large audience that you know what he does? This guy respects me, likes me, and comes on my show. And I can't tell you, he helps me too. He thinks that I just, uh, he helps me. And I'm forever grateful to him. And I don't say enough to him about that finding time to come on the program and do this. Without further ado, I think I'm, I think um, I need to kick myself in the nuts or something here. I need, I don't know what it is here, but let's bring in Mr. Gabagool. Let's bring in him. Hey. And let's bring in. Here we are, a couple days out, brother. Where's uh, Mark Holmes? Is he, is, he, is he violating his contract? <laughs> or is he just not able to get back up off the floor after I've knocked him out week after week after week? I think it's more so than this that I think he's been dacked. <laughs> he, 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 he ain't making it through the year. He, he, he's going to have a, a nervous breakdown, I'm convinced. Can I tell you that I I I actually – I didn't, I didn't reach out to him, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm getting si tired of him not having a response. Every time we say, what happens in the playoffs? I mean, it's it's becoming redundant, isn't it? I mean, I don't oh, know. Yeah. I, 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 I actually felt sorry for it, and I went, so what do I want to do? 40 minutes, kick his ass? I don't know if I want to do that, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, dude, he's going to have – dude, that team won't win five games. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching him lose a lot this year. It's well, one of the highlights of my year. I'm gonna throw this out to you right now, and I'll sketch your take because I posted this here. Okay. So, according to some of the folks in my, in my realm, Devin White was told on Tuesday he was not going to be starting. All of a sudden, we now have, including Jeff McClain, saying that Nicobe Dean had beaten him out. And it was going to be Zach Bond, and it was going to be uh, Nicobe Dean starting against the Packers. And all of a sudden, he comes up with an ankle injury. He's not even on the mm -hmm. plane heading to Brazil. And on top of that, there were murmurs of them trying to trade him, according to I Albert Breer, prior to cutdown day. So give me your spin on this here because, boy, I'll tell you what, here's some more drama going into the game on Friday. And you're really kind of limited a little bit in personnel going into that game at the linebacker position. Uh, it caught me off guard, to be honest with you. I mean, I hadn't heard of anything about him losing his starting job. Um, McLean reported that, much... that McLean reported that that he that Vic had said to him that yeah. Uh, well, I, I saw. Out. I only saw that after the fact that he was going to be out and wasn't traveling with the team. But leading up to that, I mean, if you yep. look at every practice, I was live almost every practice. They, he was, he was always with the ones. So kind of a surprise. Um, I mean, are you saying you don't think he's actually like really hurt? You think no. he's actually just being a baby? I think that they came up with an excuse not to take him down to Brazil. And I say this, well, if you could have a fake injury for Anaya Smith to put him on IR, which they did. And all of right. a sudden, you have a situation like this. And believe me, this is the stuff that happened to him in Tampa. 500, this is the stuff that he did in Tampa. He bitched yeah. him out about it, and they deactivated him and put that UDFA in, and they played that kid Kenny Britton or whatever the guy's name is, KJ Britton, the rest of the season. And that's how he lost his gig down there. That's a great – that's a that's a huge disappointment for me. I, I was really high on, on – Way. I thought the change of scenery would would do a lot for him. So I was high on, on him coming to the Eagles. And even if he can't play or he's hurt or he's not starting, I don't understand why why he shouldn't be with the team. Like, okay, you're not starting, so what? Uh, you still got to be a backup. You still We still need you. It's hard for me to believe that, that he's all of a sudden uh, just – they're just holding him out to hold him out. If that's the case, then he's not going to be here much longer. He won't make it through the year on this roster. They'll get rid of him. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what his future is. I mean, we're going to know more next week, I would think, right? 
I guess. I mean, the Albert Breer thing too. Like, you trying to trade him? Like, like, yeah, I didn't see any of that coming. Uh, but it, it does concern me though because you've got no veteran presence really at right. that linebacking spot. So if if you're going to let him go, you you got to bring somebody else in. I like. I like the young talent that they have, but they're young. They got to go out and play and prove it. So a lot of, a lot of questions all of a sudden at linebacker. Uh, it's kind of a weird turn of events, to be honest. Okay, let's go on to this one. Let me give you another little tidbit that I heard and that I saw and that I kind of got a heads up prior to them getting on the airplane of what the, what the, um, what the um, depth chart is. How about this one here? Now, I'm not reporting that he is. But I'm telling you what I saw. Keely Ringo's at cornerback too, not Isaiah Rogers. And they got mm. him there because here, the Packer wide receivers are awful talented and awful big dudes. They're 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 yeah. physical guys. Okay, so you think Vic? And by the way, the reason that Mitchell's not out there is because even Vic said in the last press conference, Philly, he goes like this. He goes. Well, he's going to be out there because we need him in the slot. And he's going to be out there 70% of the time. He's going to play corner, too. I think he's their most versatile secondary guy. And I take Vic yeah. at that, that he's going to play across the board and probably have the most reps. But they need him in other positions. So, with all that being said, would you be shocked if Keely Ringo's out there instead of Isaiah Rogers? No. I mean, I, I guess it's possible. I think uh, it makes guys sense. Were on... Yeah, I mean, but, I mean – I don't know. He's also got a hurt hand, so I don't know what his 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 situation with his hand is. But um, I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me uh, whatever they do at the secondary because they they were floating these guys in and out all all training camp. Um, I'm assuming Rogers is going to play, but if Ringo goes in there, I think that's okay. I think he'll be fine. To be honest with you, I I actually like Ringo a lot. Okay, let me throw this at you here. What do you make about Darius Slay? And his him crying about going into um, Brazil, and now all of a sudden he apologized yesterday. And you know he was coming up because here, 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 here's my issue with that. You got a leader. Gary Cobb said it too. You got a leader in your secondary who's also a captain of your football team, and he's bitching and moaning about going and playing in Brazil, dude. You got young players on that football team. Don't you think he's got to act more like a leader, or yeah, is it enough, probably is it a nothing burger to you? No, it's probably probably shouldn't have said it, but it's nothing burger. I don't want to. I didn't want them to go to Brazil either. I don't either. Why would you want to go to Brazil? I don't, I don't think any of those players want from C.J. Gardner Johnson to Devontae Smith. Uh, but yeah, I mean, probably to be uh, you know, supporting the team and going there. Yeah, you probably shouldn't say it, but it's still the truth. It, you know, it it is what it is. It's the truth, and he let the bag out. You know, and that's it. Once it's out of the bag. You know, I, I don't think you could put it back in. So to me, I would have more problem with him apologizing after just saying, you already said, don't apologize. You said it. Let's do it here. Here's another one for you. Um, Who has the advantage at quarterback on Friday? And let me throw these out to you here. Last year, love 41-59, 32 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He went 10-9 and counting the playoffs, beating the Cowboys in Dallas to go on to the divisional round. Hurts last year, 38-58, 23 touchdowns, 15 picks. He was 11-8, and and they got beat in the playoffs by, in the wild card round, by the Buccaneers. Going into this football game, who in your opinion – and by the way, before you answer, I don't think this – it's a style – it's a style point thing here. So whatever style you might like, I don't think the difference is like this. I think it's more right. like this. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, I think it's razor thin here. Mm -hmm. How do you look at this matchup? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty thin because I, I think that both these teams are going up against defenses that they're going to be able to move the ball on. I expect a high-scoring game. Um, I think both secondary – I like Jair Alexander, but after him, I think you can move the ball on them. I think you can also run the ball on them. So I, I think – Quarterback wise, I think it's pretty even because I think both defenses uh, will will get the ball moved on them a lot. I like that take, and I do think you're dead on with that too. Because, but he, now, then let me separate this. And I was talking this with Xander here. 
most teams have about 65 plays a game. Mm -hmm. Give me your formula, what you think the Eagles are going to do in this game on Friday, how many passes and how many runs, because I think this is going to dictate how they're going to win this ball game because I'm going to, I'll, I, Hey, I'll bury the lead with you. If they throw the ball too much, they're going to lose. Mm. Right. Because the bat, you, he can't win games without using his wheels. And in the last three years, Philly, Jalen hurts is over 320 carries. Just want you to know right. that. So how many carries do you think it's going to be between hurts, Barkley, Gainwell, maybe Shipley, and how many passes you think he throws in this game on Friday? See, I, me personally, I think what I want is not what they're going to do. But I, right. I haven't seen enough of Kellen Moore. I think you need to come out in this game and you need to feature Barkley heavy. You haven't played a lot of reps in preseason. You haven't done a lot there. So come out, run Barkley, get guys kind of you know, into a rhythm and things like that. So if it was me, I would be closer to 50-50. But I don't think it'll be that. I think it'll be somewhere around 60-40 pass to run ratio. Uh, See, I just, think if they get I think if they get north of 40, I think they lose. If they stay around 35, but mm -hmm. then again, there's no way they're gonna run the ball 30 times. There's just no way they're gonna combine run the ball 30, 30. combine 30 carries. I think it'll be I think it could be close. I think Barkley has around 20 touchdowns. Wow. I think I think uh it's also gonna will, dictate well, it's also gonna five dictate to seven. It's and, also and gonna dictate gonna run. It's probably going to dictate the flow of the game too, as well. Like if you're yeah, behind, well, if, if I'm the Eagles, yeah. I run the ball. I mean, I Me mean, too. come out and run the ball. You got Barkley. Unleash Barkley early. You haven't played, like I said, all preseason. Plus, you keep that that offense off the field. To me, I would I would do that. I would come out and, and especially early in the year. My formula would be heavy Barkley early in the year. Let my defense adjust. And then as they adjust and things start getting better on defense, I start throwing more. I, I That's what I would do. But, you know, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of Kellen Moore, even though, you know, what he was with Dallas, to, to know what, what he's planning. See, and, and, and like, I like what you said, too, there also, because Kellen Moore doesn't have Dak. That's not Dak's right. skill set. That quarterback looks nothing like Prescott. There's nothing right. that's remotely close to them. So when people go, well, you know what? I mean, I mean, what's he going to look like? I don't, I don't know what he's going to look like. I have no idea. But if you go with what they did in Dallas, and I'm going to take Yale's comment here, I think Barkley's impact in this game is going to be pass protection and also catching passes in this game. And well, I yeah, think those because... checkdowns are going to be used kind of as small intermediate runs. Well, I yeah, and I think that there's – I think – you know, if you can hit Barkley, especially with the blitz, because you know teams are going to blitz the Eagles. They're going to keep blitzing Hurts. I think that opens up the, you know, the little dump offs to Barkley where where you can get big yards underneath. And that's not something that they did last year, which I, I never understood with DeAndre Swift why they wouldn't throw to him more, too. So, you know. Let me ask you this one here. A couple more here, if you don't mind. You, you cool? A couple more? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. How much pressure do you believe was on Jalen Hurts to get out to a strong start in 2024? I think I think there's pressure on the E. I think there's pressure on him, of course. I mean, you know, after the way the season ended last year, yeah, you, you've got to you've you've got to assume that there's pressure for him. Uh, you got a lot of weapons. You got a better running back than you had. You got a more experienced coordinator. Uh, yeah, I, there's definitely pressure. I, how much? A, a lot. I think a lot. I mean, the one thing that they have to do in this game, in my opinion, against the Packers, I don't even know if it's putting up a ton of yards. It can't turn the ball over, man. They've right. got to show two things for me on offense. Blitz pick up and also not turning the football over. Philly, if they can't do that, boy, they're going to be a lot of screaming when it comes right. uh, Monday if those guys can't do those two things. Yeah, well, of course, and, and what uh, I'm telling you, what you know, who's going to get going to get killed if they lose this game, and especially let's say because of turnovers and sloppy play, it's going to be Nick Sirianni. The coach is going to get killed 
because he didn't play these guys at all. And that's what everybody's going to go to. Well, they didn't play. They didn't play. Of course they make mistakes. Sloppy, you know. That's what people are going to look at. So, to me, um, I, if I'm the Eagles, man, I, I use Barkley. I take advantage of Barkley. Barkley hasn't played with an offense like this before. I say unleash him early and, and do that. And I do think on the defensive side of the ball, I think the guy you got to watch out for, for the Eagles, I think is going to have a monster game is Jalen Carter. I think he can get – I think he could do damage in that interior line of that that Green Bay Packers game. And if he's getting damage, uh, that that could cause Love to turn over the ball, fumble the ball. And so hopefully, you know, it'll go that way. Um, You mentioned Sirianni. How about this one here? Isn't it crazy? I, I brought this up with Xander. Nothing he can do on Friday is a win for him. If Kellen Moore and the Eagles put up 40 points against the Packers, Everyone's going to go, look what last year was. It was Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni, and he right. was the cancer. And look at Hurts and how he's playing. But if they turn around and play shitty, it's going to come down on what you said, and the cancer's still in the locker room, and it's Nick and some of the things that you mentioned, even though I think it's organizationally, where right. that was a decision that was made. Nick can't win on Friday. Have you ever seen anything <laughs> like it where no matter what he – hey, they could if they win by 40 points – he looks yeah. bad. Yeah. Well, because everybody's going to assume it's the offensive coordinator. That that's I mean, this is the issue we went back to, you know, talking about this in February. Like, why do you keep him? Or you really want to keep him? It's like he's in a no-win situation. He has to kind of tuck his tail between his legs and come back, right? Doug Peterson said, nah, forget this. I'm gone. Nick did what he did. He came back, and now you're in a situation where uh, they're going to be putting out stories. The beat writers are going to be putting out stories about what great job Nick Sirianni's done. He's not going to get any credit. Uh, it's just the the way the situation has has been set up. So, yeah, it, it's it's a no, I think a no win situation for him. I really do. Finally, I have to ask you, how do you see this thing playing out Friday? Who who wins the ball game, and what do you have with a score? A high scoring game. I got high I agree. scoring I, game. I think too. I do. I'm with you there. I think I think it's gonna be a high scoring game. Like I said, I think fourth quarter late, uh Jalen Carter makes a big play, gets a turnover, Eagles get the ball in Green Bay's uh side of the field, and the Eagles win this game 31 28. There you game go. ball goes to Jalen Carter in your opinion. There you go. And and my man Saquon 165 yards and two touchdowns. What Good get time. ready. What? Right. Mark, how, uh, how many sacks for Huff? Five yards. How many sacks for Huff? A half. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Does the Kobe? Does the Kobe Dean finish the game? Yes, ten tackles. Oh my! Wait a minute. Nicobe Bednarik Dean. <laughs> Yes. Concrete <laughs> Dean. There you go. Concrete Dean. <laughs> oh, wait. Concrete 2 Dean. There he is. Concrete <laughs> 2. Holy shit. You and hey, Xander goes, it's concrete season 2. It's Nicobe Dean, baby. Go. It's there time for him to step up. It is time for him to step up, though, isn't it? It is. It is. He's got to stay healthy, and he's got to step up. I, he, this is going to be a high-scoring game. I, I really is. think the defense – for the most part, is going to be – both sides are going to be getting yards th thrown and run on all day. But I, I think late in the game I could see Jalen Carter, somebody just making that play, taking advantage of an opportunity. So, How many touchdowns does Jalen throw for? Two. How many does he run for? I'm going to say zero. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to say Barkley gets those carries. Barkley, the and you're saying Barkley has probably what two TDs, two touchdowns, yeah, and a hundred what, sixty five yards. <laughs> I love it, Billy. Tell the folks where they can find you, man. That's just type that's in Philly five hundred. Absolutely, or you could just put on there the ownership of Mark Holmes. That's it, and that'll you take you that right too. there too, that's man. Right. I appreciate right. it, brother. Thank, thank you so you, much man. for doing this, All and right. I really can't thank you enough appreciate for you coming aboard here, man. Thank you, brother. Of course. Thank you, man. Thanks.
You got it. The great Philly 500. Make sure you check his great workout. We so appreciate it. Concrete Dean. There it is, baby. That's the new video. Concrete Dean. By the way, Laura Lomer is going to come on tomorrow. And I didn't realize until somebody told me that she's a heavyweight, like in the political world. And she's going to come on and give us, um, can't today, but will tomorrow all right so we're gonna find out about some of those things that are going on inside the um the eagle brass with those with those posters so okay <laughs> holy cow philly 500 loves laura lomer well she's coming on tomorrow okay yep she's coming on tomorrow so we're going to have a full pack show tomorrow on that. I didn't know who she was really until I started doing some research. And I'm like, yeah, look at Yale. Yale, you expose yourself all the time when you know that you are, you're, you're, you're a liberal. And I could tell Yale all good. I'll tell you what, I love your football takes and I love your sports takes. Okay. I, I do, man. I love your takes. I'll be there. Very good. All right. Hit that like. Where are we now in the like button? By the way, everybody wants to come on the Sill Show. Okay, everyone. She says, yeah, I'd love to come on. She goes, I really don't do a lot of that, but I will. How you doing? All right. <laughs> Hit the like button. 252. Come on, guys. Let's see if we can get 40 more. I'd like to see if we can get the little, like, around 330 by the end of the program here. I still got a topic that I've saved for you. You know what it is? Eagle defense versus Packer offense. What I think needs to happen on defense against that Packer offense. We're going to reset again at the top of the hour. Okay? Hit that like button. Do me a favor. Keep it here, National Football Show. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.